Marilyn, it feels like old times. <laughs> I can't seem to get away from it. <laughs> So, Connor, um, I guess whenever you want to get started, we're recording, and I think you have your full committee here, I think. Yes, I think we do now, too. All right, so welcome, everyone. This is our February 24th, 2021 Master Plan Committee meeting, and so just subject to the open meeting law that Governor Baker suspended certain provisions back in March and we're holding this over Zoom and it is open to the public and recorded. And so welcome, I think we're all introduced to ourselves but we do have a new member on our committee, Marilyn. So thank you for joining us. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think our next item on the agenda is the visioning session and proposed statement. Great. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We just introduced Dunya. Oh, well, sure. Yeah, sorry. Do, do you mind, Connor? We have a visitor from Morocco, um, a fellow on a United States State Department professional exchange program that's um, with us for six weeks. Unfortunately, not in person. She would be in person, but due to the pandemic, she's still in Morocco. But Dunya Nuf is a, a planner and architect who works in Morocco, and she's with us for six weeks. So thanks oh. for making her welcome. Awesome. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> so um, I think Alexis or Fiona, if you guys want to get started. Sure. You should have the ability to share screen. All right, excellent, thank you. <clears throat> so we are going to be, um, oh, sorry, Fiona, I'm just, Fiona, do you mind just muting? Sorry. Oh yeah, sorry. That's <laughs> all right. We're in kind of an open space right now. So, <clears throat> all right. So I'm going to be sharing a, uh, a presentation just kind of talking about recaps and our, kind of our takeaways from the visioning session to hear from from you all if you know if your takeaways were the same and um, uh, then looking at going forward some things that we are um, are trying to work out and finalize one of which is a vision statement which Ken shared a draft with you yesterday hopefully you at least had a chance to look at it we want to talk uh, talk it over with you today and um, develop parameters for how you can provide us with suggestions for um, uh, edits, things you want to add or take away or like or don't like. And then also move forward to talk about plans for focus groups, which we will be having four focus groups. And I will uh, talk to you about what that entails and kind of who we're thinking should come and who we wanted we, with you all here, we wanted to kind of show you our draft list and see if there's anybody um, that you think would also be a good fit for different um, for, for different topics. And, and the focus groups align with uh, master plan elements. So we, we definitely want to hear from, from you committee members as to who you think would be um, a good fit. So uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Can everybody see my screen? Yep, I can see okay. it. Okay, excellent, thank you. All right, so the visioning session uh, from the 13th, we just wanted to kind of go over some, some key takeaways uh, from our perspective of what we thought went well, uh, things that we realized, you know, maybe when we look at the, uh, look ahead to the implementation workshop for May, which will likely also be um, virtual, kind of uh, looking into, okay, what can we do to, to um, improve for that? And then uh, also highlights from the chat. So what we perceived to go well was uh, the audience was very engaged. We were happy to see such a great turnout as well. That was awesome. So that's credit to, um, to, to your community. Um, our breakout uh, discussions, there were five and, and from, from what we saw and heard, they were quite productive. Uh, helpful volunteers, um, the transition between session activities, um, uh, the, uh, the, the tech support people did a, a great job uh, with the padlets and um, sharing them as needed. So thank you for doing that. Um, the link sharing within the chat. Uh, we did hear some, some positive feedback, so that made us happy. And also the fact that there was a desire from attendees to learn more. We had, you know, a, as that sign up link was shared, we were seeing people, you know, live throw in their information. So it was great to see such, um, such an eagerness to, to learn more. I am curious if there's anybody on this meeting who is not officially a committee member, but 
was on that uh, that email list uh, or at that visioning session. Do we have anyone who's not? Uh, I'm just curious to see if we have any other attendees observing. No, okay. So this is uh, this is Russell Denver. I'm not an official member of the committee, um, but I found it to be excellent. Very very well done. I thought the initial questions that were asked kind of got the got the people into you know, into the session, and uh, I thought there was really a wonderful flow of questions and answers and suggestions. I thought it was just very well run. Oh, that is so wonderful to hear. Um, and and. Uh, I so 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 Russell, you are the chair of the planning board, correct? Because I, yep, I am. yes, okay, all right, great. Because we have some questions for you about the uh, the economic development focus yep. group in particular. So I'm very glad you're here. Um, in terms of things for consideration for the implementation workshop in May, uh, we you kind of learned from, okay, how can we do the social media outreach and things like that, things uh, that we kind of worked our way through with the visioning session. So uh, ways that we can advertise earlier, get more of kind of a social media blast going sooner, um, inviting uh, the press to, to that uh -huh. event. Uh, a big one, reminding the audience to, to uh -huh. mute if not speaking. Um, also testing speakers and audio uh, during the test run because we had um, some, some hiccups with that. Um, All apologies for that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was me. Uh, well, it's hard too because you can't hear your own self to make sure that other people can hear you. So, right, um, right. Um, you know, it, when you're running the meeting, sometimes it's easy to forget about phone participants and making sure we pause and include them and give them the opportunity um, and just kind of allowing for more discussion during the polls. So that's what we want to make sure we, we kind of remember going forward. If you have anything else that you're thinking, hey, maybe we could do better for the implementation workshop, feel free to put that in the chat um, or you can email us and let us know uh, things that you said, hmm, maybe this could be, you know, a bit smoother in the next uh, larger public meeting. We also wanted to summarize chat highlights. Um, there, are in, people brought up the balance between active and passive recreation. Um, there was generally a pretty strong support for expansion improvements to the rail trail. Uh, there was, we we saw this come up in the notes from multiple of the breakout groups, but the discussion around the incorporation of drive-throughs throughout the uh, community, in particular, came up with regard to uh, pharmacies. I think you know, with with COVID and how um, people are kind of realizing that that is potentially a a deficit. Um, there was also, uh, you know, feedback about um, the the in, you know providing for the disability community with their specific needs, their accessibility needs, and housing. Uh, a desire to be inclusive, diverse. Someone actually someone used the term judgment free zone, um, and then uh, also the need to implement the sidewalk master plan came up. Uh, in the chat and uh, the need for more affordable and inclusive housing for singles, seniors and small families. So those are the things we kind of just pulled from the saved chat. So thank you to everybody who participated in that and helped monitor that. The, the polls, we originally, uh, when we were designing the polls, it was going to be based on goals from uh, prior planning efforts. And then we decided to kind of customize them a bit. And so we had asked about an, um, a recommendation from the MVP report uh, becoming uh, a Massachusetts Department of Energy Resources certified green community. 83% supported that recommendation. And uh, during the meeting, Mayor Recall Fiona gave an explanation as to what that meant so people would know what it was they were voting for. Um, the this, this question is interesting. It has the most kind of, um, you know, uncertainty to it because I think people were kind of unsure. Someone actually asked during the visioning session, if you recall, why does it have to be either or? So we had a question about, um, do you think East Longmeadow uh, functions well as a bedroom community, i.e. a commuter town? Or would you like to see more local job opportunities so people don't necessarily have to leave to go uh, to, to, you know, to access jobs in certain industries and whatnot? So this definitely, if you look at those statistics, definitely was more split than the other questions. Um, oh, it looks like that that third question I'm, I'm just seeing now was, was a, a repeat. Um, it wasn't actually, so I, I would have to pull that up. Fiona, while I am talking through, do you think you'd be able to um, pull up what that third poll question was? Because that was more definitive, 82% uh, saying yes. And I can't currently remember, so Fiona will pull it up for us. But then the fourth question, uh, pretty strong yes for 86%. Do you want to see an expansion of the uh, the rail trail? 
So the third one was recreation. Okay. Um, okay. Improved recreation space. Oh, right, right, right. Um, improved recreation uh, facilities. Um, yes, yes, thank you. And so 82% uh, saying yes to that. Thank you for that. And I apologize um, for, for that. Okay, so yeah, so pretty clear. <laughs> it's funny, questions one, three, and four, a pretty strong trend there. Um, question two, though, I think was, was definitely, probably could lend itself to some more discussion. So we won't um, read through all this. I'll, I'll leave this up for, for just a moment, but each, there were five breakout groups. And rather than going through what each one said, we tried to kind of compile it. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that up for you. Uh, but strengths, it was really great to hear I'll kind of focus on that because as we drafted the vision, that was a lot of what Fiona and I focused on was uh, all the wonderful things that members of the community had to say about the community, the education system, the passive and active recreation, the really uh, strong sense of welcoming community. Although someone did point out in, I can't recall off the top of my head if it was within a breakout group or in the chat, but sometimes that can also actually be not a weakness, but can make newcomers feel unwelcome, that there's already such a strong sense of community. So being aware of that uh, and making sure that you kind of continue to, to be welcoming to newcomers as well. I think um, that was in our breakout group. Alex. Oh yes, yes, thank you, Connor. Uh, also the, the location and being able to use that as kind of an asset, um, the availability of developable land. And in our breakout group as well, Connor, uh, someone brought up the fact that there's more of a willingness in East Long Meadow to, to welcome development as compared to neighboring, you know, compared to Longmeadow, for example. Um, proactive residents, it did come up, I think it was in my breakout group as well, that, that sometimes that isn't quite as strong as, as it could be because of that whole idea that it is a commuter town for many people. So they leave in the morning, they, you know, are gone all day at work, they come back, it's nighttime. And so they may not be as, um, as involved in, in the community as, as perhaps they could be if they were, if they were, around more really, but um, overall just the general uh, desire of residents to, to be a part of the community. Um, so the support for small businesses, the community events and celebrations, sense of belonging, just it was, it was nice to hear all of, all of those strengths that people had to say um, about their communities. However, as was pointed out when we were talking through the takeaways, there's a lot of overlap. What is a strength can also tie into a weakness. Uh, a weakness may lend itself to an opportunity once it's been identified. Um, threats and weaknesses often tie in. So you definitely can see some overlap there. So, so what, what Fiona and I do following the visioning session and, and continuing conversations with our friends at PVPC, we, we kind of, we, we look at what we heard and we try from admittedly our, our, our limited exposure to the community's vision, we draft a, an initial, and I, I'm emphasizing initial, <laughs> draft vision statement because uh, it, it can get tweaked throughout the process. So before I move on though, is there anything else that uh, committee members are feeling as though our summary is neglecting to report or anyone from PVPC who was there, something that you think maybe um, we could be adding to our notes. Hey, Alexis. Yeah. Hey, um, I see it in the threats as far as uh, police department issues, but um, I had we had the um, the town manager Mary McNally, and she viewed that as one of our strengths that um, cr the crime rate essentially in this area is, is generally really low, and she it was something that she was very proud of. Uh, okay. Um, so I I would definitely probably consider that to be a strength. Okay. Of the town that it's generally pretty safe. Yeah, you know, that's, yes, that was brought up in our um, breakout group. I would have to kind of look at the specific breakout group that that came from, or I imagine if we put it in the, in the overall takeaways, it may have come up. Um, I, I know, she, I know she mentioned it in ours. So, and I was, group, I was group four. So. Okay. All right. Thank if, you. I don't know if that's a note. For there, yeah, but. we will definitely kind of look because we want to make sure that that um, is reflected in our sense of the vision for the community. So thank you for, for bringing that up. All right, thank you. So okay. I, was, I was in the same group as Joe mm -hmm. and there was reference to housing and it was a lower cost housing rather than I guess what most people uh, refer to as affordable housing. Mm. So I think there was a difference. Okay, so a lack of lower cost housing? Yes. Okay, got it. 
Okay. I think also in that regard, um, Mary also had mentioned how, you know, we have the one tax rate, mm -hmm. which, which could also be a strength as it's kind of like a draw because I know some other towns might have separate tax rates for certain things, like maybe pay a trash fee mm -hmm. separate from, you know, separate from your taxes. Whereas here, you know, everything's kind of all inclusive and it provides a little bit of a benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we will uh, send out, I know Catherine and um, Ken, we had, we shared this and we're happy to send it to the committee as well. Um, we did, we have kind of much more detailed notes that uh, include everything that each breakout group said. Um, so I think what we'll do after this is uh, Fiona and I will look over that to make sure we included those things that you just shared with us um, and, and, and kick that out to the committee as well. I think Ken, you also had mentioned potentially posting it on the project website, but we can discuss yeah. that. But I'll make sure we look at our notes first to make sure that, that those things are uh, accounted for. So thank you very much. So taking all that we heard, uh, what, what we do on our end is we, we produce a draft vision statement. And uh, what we do with, with you wonderful people is we are going to just review it with you. We understand, you know, uh, having 24 hours to look at it, you might need to think about it more. So we want to make sure you have that time. We're, we don't need to end this session today with all of your thoughts. Um, I do want to uh, kick a question to Catherine really quickly and just say, when do you need the, I guess I want to say, final draft? Because I know we might tweak it as we continue through the focus groups and things like that, but you might uh, need to have it to share. Catherine, is that a concern or are we not on a tight deadline for the vision statement? Well, we would like to have something, um, I would say by like, you know, maybe March 10th or oh, okay, so, that we, can, okay. Phew, uh, so okay. that we can integrate it into the, um, I mean, the sooner the better, but yes, um, yes. we're submitting the draft chapters by March 15th. Got and it. so we would like them to be informed by the final vision statement as the as the staff write them. But you know we have a good sense of it, so it's not it's not um, crucial. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So so that's great. So um, I might update uh, this this slide to say rather than um, uh, throughout the week, I I think we can probably say to the committee to give you uh, a week on that feedback. So maybe by the end of next week. So so what we'll do is we'll talk through the vision statement today. Um, and kind of give you a chance to talk about it with each other. If there's anything that you really want to see changed or you know right off the bat needs work, we want to hear that from, from you today. But then you can also individually think about it some more um, and then get us feedback, whether you want to send it to Catherine and Ken or you can um, contact Fiona and me, whatever you want to do, but you can get us just kind of your feedback on the vision statement to us via email. Um, and then with that, um, and assuming that we've been able to get through the focus groups as well, Fiona and I will will take your edits, your comments, things that we learned through the focus groups and produce a new draft um, to share with you and with PVPC. And from there, you may choose to continue to uh, work on it with PVPC, but but that is that's kind of where where we'll take you through that. So, um, after the vision statement um, discussion today, I'm going to look at the uh, focus group plan with you because we definitely want to hear your input on who we should be inviting and, um, and the sorts of things we might be asking them. So um, if, there's, if there's no questions on kind of the next steps, uh, I'll move on to the vision statement. So we kind of have two versions and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show, just toggle back and forth briefly, but, but the content is the same. Um, sometimes we hear from communities that, that uh, like things in more of a narrative, uh, you know, so we have the, the two paragraphs here, um, but other, other times it might kind of be easier to read as bullets. We're gonna kind of let you kind of talk through that. Either way, the second paragraph or the bullets, however you think of it, this, this moves into the goals for the plan. Um, and so that's why they're so specific. So what we would encourage you to think of the vision statement as, I know sometimes you might immediately think like, well, it's not, it's not saying how we're gonna make all this happen. And the vision statement isn't really supposed to give that level of detail. A vision statement is like an overall umbrella for the plan. And from that vision statement, uh, you get into kind of specific goals that tie into each of the master plan elements. 
And those are also drafted through the community vision and through what we've learned about uh, PVPC's background research with existing conditions and, you know, what kind of, what, what, what goals will help make this vision happen. Uh, and then from there is when you get into specific action recommendations that can enable the goals to happen that will enable the vision to be realized. So this is the overall umbrella. So try and keep that in mind because I know sometimes there's thoughts of, you know, immediately like, well, we need to include this specific thing. We need to include, you know, we need to redo the high school. We need to do this. And yes, those those specific things we absolutely, absolutely do need to hear about and do want to include. However, they may not be in the vision statement. So I will read it out loud for those of you who like to hear, and then um, I'll just also just kind of leave it up for you to look at. Um, but our plan, we envision a vibrant future for East Long Meadow, one in which we value and include all members of our community, plan for managed and sustainable growth, and cultivate the town's identity as a charming and welcoming place to call home. We are poised to flourish as a presence within the region and the East Long Meadow Resilient Master Plan provides a lasting framework that will enable us to fulfill this vision. By balancing development opportunities with sensible fiscal management and natural resource conservation, we will establish a strong local economic base, welcome cultural, commercial and entertainment options that enrich our community's sense of place, explore diverse opportunities for the town's developable land, align zoning policies to community needs and wants, invest in the redevelopment of our town center and industrial zones, diversify our housing stock to meet the needs of present and future residents, promote our unique heritage and history as a quarry town, continue to support passive and, recre and active recreation opportunities, provide intergenerational programming facilities that meet the needs of families, seniors, disabled residents and youth, improve accessibility and increase resources for disabled individuals and their families, sustain a high level of professional staffing and municipal operations, support the needs of our schools, promote local volunteerism, plan for energy efficiency, green initiatives and resiliency to climate change, encourage multimodal transportation through street improvements and expansion of accessible pedestrian and cyclist infrastructure and establish East Long Meadow as an inclusive, judgment-free, safe, flourishing community for all. So that's the overall vision that kind of moves into clear goals that you can readily identify as tying into specific master plan elements. Um, so again, this is it kind of in paragraph form. This is it in bullet form. Um, I'll leave this up. I know it's visually a little bit easier to, to process and just kind of let you think about it. And um, then in a moment, I'm gonna, Fiona will be taking notes as we kind of talk through on things that you may wanna keep in the plan, things that you definitely wanna delete, things that you wanna add, uh, and just general other comments. So she'll be taking notes on this slide. I will keep up the vision statement in case you don't have it in front of you. Um, so uh, with that, I turn it over to, to the RMPC. Um, I have a few, um, okay. so I can start. Um, I like the bulleted version better than the just paragraph of text because I think it's a little easier to see the separation of each, each one. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's probably some things that we could add. I'm not sure what they would be, but based off of the, the recap slide that you had a couple before, there's probably a thing or two that we could come up with after the meeting. Sure. Um, I think the one that says provide intergenerational programming and facilities, I think it's somewhat repetitive with the following one where it says like improve accessibility for disabled individuals because both of them are talking about, not exclusively, but they both mention improving things for disabled mm. residents. So it's- Oh, there should be a comma there, yeah. Um, and together. Yeah, we can we can look at that. I think um, it was specifically mentioned a concern about some of the buildings having limited accessibility, and so we were trying to kind of uh, um, address that, not lose sight of that as a potential goal for the plan. Um, but uh, so Fiona, as as you're kind of taking notes over there, just seeing if we can reduce the repetitiveness between those two bullets about the intergenerational programming and facilities and the improved accessibility. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah. 
Other yeah. thoughts, Connor? Yeah, I don't know if we should make the, the line about supporting the needs of our schools, like adding a little bit more to that, because I think one of the things that we learned from the visioning statement, I think most of us assumed it beforehand, but people confirmed it was that our school system is a big draw for people to move to town, mm -hmm. and stay in town. And so if we can kind of make it a priority to ensure that we keep that up to the same level or better than it is now. Mm. We don't okay. I, I, I had that same exact thought as Connor. Yeah. Okay. About that statement about schools. Okay. Yeah. So it's funny because originally we had something specifically about the high school. And uh, at least in my breakout group, the the sense that it really is just, it is outdated, needs, you know, <laughs> it's, it's days are done. <laughs> but um, so not wanting to lose that, keeping it more general, but as, you know, to your point, people identified the education system as a, as a strength in the community. And so kind of making sure we're almost saying, you know, to continue to prioritize and, and keep up that, that standard that people enjoy so much about uh, East Longmeadow schools. So that's good. Thank you, Joe and Connor. Yeah. And then the next one was, we have encouraged multimodal transportation. Mm -hmm. And that one's good because people definitely mentioned alternative forms, whether it's like the walking trail and so forth. But I think they also mentioned things just like the general road conditions in town and mm -hmm. traffic situations in certain parts. So I don't mm -hmm. know if we're kind of limiting ourselves when we just say like only multimodal transportation is what we want to focus on as the town's vision. Okay. Yeah, I tried to sprinkle in the through street improvements because that did come up in, in our group, I know. Um, yeah. But it, I guess the overall thing then isn't multimodal transportation. It's, you know, improved general transportation through things like street improvements and encouragement of multimodal um, means of transportation through. Yeah, so I can see yeah. that. Yes. I think what okay. you just said actually works if we kind of flip it to say improving the transportation by these types of things. Yes, yes. Exactly. Okay. And awesome. then I think the only other one that I had was the last sentence was a little repetitive. Mm -hmm. I would probably just reword it to say something like establish East Long Meadow as a safe and inclusive community. Okay. Because I think judgment free is a bit repetitive because it's already implied by inclusive. Mm -hmm. And likewise, I think the flourishing statement we already said like in the first paragraph, so I don't know okay. if we repeat it again. Okay. Okay. And I, you know, <laughs> Uh, the the we wanted to include judgment free only because somebody in the chat suggested it and then a, a, quite a few people said agree agree but that in and of itself can almost read as a judgment in a way so um yeah i think simplifying it that that would work so you said inclusive and uh, safe inclusive community for all kind of yeah and establish way. east Palmetto as a safe and inclusive community for all yeah, okay i i agree with that statement alexis and that it can kind of almost be a, a judgmental statement in itself. Mm -hmm. Not to say not to say that it's not warranted, but it, I feel like it kind of gives East Long Meadow a negative. Yeah, like it's know, currently judgmental. Vibe, like like we're very judgmental or something yeah. like that, and that we don't want to be that way. You know. Okay. Um, my my I, I agree with Connor on, on all his thoughts. Uh, my only last thought, um, aside from the fact that for me, I just need to kind of read this, you know, at a later date. Mm -hmm. and just kind of just get my arms around like how things are worded, how each bullet point is worded. Mm -hmm. um, but with regard to the safe aspect of it, I think that's something we should be proud of now. Yes. And not that we're looking to establish that, you know, down the road. I think it's something that we should be proud of right now. So maybe just kind of finding a way to incorporate it, incorporate that into a, a bullet earlier okay. in a okay. sense, indicating that, you know, continuing to remain safe and, you know, a safe town for okay. to raise a family and things like that. Yeah, the um, part of my thought with that, and I, I agree with you, especially because people did mention the the low crime rate and, and uh, things of that nature, um, specifically was concerns about physical safety with, um, with walking um, and particularly walking to school and how kids can't walk to school with a lack of sidewalks. Um, so safe in kind of a general sense, but- yeah. So, so, um, I see exactly I, I see, what you mean in that regard. Yes. But I don't want to take away from what you're saying either with the idea that it already is safe. It already is, you know, we don't, we don't want to, I don't yeah, know. There's, I, there's two well, levels of safe here that we need yeah, to establish, yeah, right? Exactly. Safe is in like, 
crime free, but safe as in also like being able to walk down the street without, you know, a sidewalk is obviously not necessarily safe. So kind of, you know, separating those two somehow. Mm -hmm. And I think this is exactly why the specific uh, wording that, that Connor and Joe that you brought up is, is exactly why we want to make sure you have extended time to think through some of these things mm -hmm. um, and get back to us. Because I think, you know, with all of, all of your input, uh, we're going to start to revise it just with what we've heard today and what we're going to hear today. Um, but then also people, I think, will have some time to really think about specific ways to word it in such a way that it kind of honors what you do already have and what you do already do well um, and things that, that we've neglected to include. Hey, Alexis, is there, yeah. what, while we're looking at this over the next week or week and a half or so, is it mm -hmm. possible to get um, the Padlet from all five breakout sessions. Yes. So we can kind of make sure that we incorporate what people said into our yes. thoughts behind, you know, cause I know personally, like I have different thoughts that maybe didn't make it to the Padlet and I want to make sure that I'm not skewed by my own opinion as opposed to. Absolutely. Wanting to Fiona, make sure that I incorporate everybody else's, you know. It, absolutely, Fiona, in, in the overall notes that we shared with PVPC yesterday, that includes each of the breakout group padlets, right? It's not a summary, it's it's the actual notes or? Okay, yes, yeah, so yes. Um, in short, yes, <laughs> we can okay. make sure that you get that. All right, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and George here, I, I would like to uh, suggest an add to this. Sure. Uh, and that is a line on agriculture. Uh, we've got at least eight working farms in town right now. Okay. And they're thriving. Um, okay. And one of the, uh, newer farmers was part a participant in uh, in this uh, visioning session. Uh, I think we ought to have a line in there that just says something along the lines of support existing agriculture in town, because it's, um, the the local farms actually are a real asset. People like having that fresh local food. Mm -hmm. But farming can be difficult if, if you it's not in the plan because uh, it's also it difficult to get grants and so on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's absolutely an, an easy add and valid and important for the economic development uh, portion of the plan as well. Um, Lori, I, I think I saw your name pop up. Meaning, were you trying to? Well, say yeah, something it's, to off? it's also a you know it's a, a re, it's almost a recreational and cultural. Um, environment creates that environment where you know you can go visit some of these places have created environments where the whole family can go visit you know pick apples or whatever so yeah it's it's multi-faceted absolutely okay so yes that's an easy and very important ad I agree okay thank you Alexis I was thinking um, the welcome cultural commercial and entertainment options uh, would be kind of an umbrella for um, the bullet for promoting our unique heritage and history as a quarry town. Um, and maybe we could kind of incorporate that into okay. the one just to have less um, bullet points. Okay. Um, maybe we can talk about that more in the cultural chapter specifically. That is... A very good. Yes, you're right, because that absolutely would be encompassed in, in that um, to, and that would allow us to cut down on the bullets. I think okay. that's a good idea. Yeah. Alexis, um, if I can just go back to sort of piggyback on Joe's and Connor's uh, thoughts around safe. Does mm -hmm. it make sense to put safe in the first paragraph where you have, um, you know, identity as a charming and welcoming safe place to call home? That would be a very good place to use that word. Yes, <laughs> you got that, Fiona. Yeah. And then, um, when you're trying to differentiate safe regarding um, moving around town with or without sidewalks, possibly in that bullet where you're talking about encourage multimodal transportation, we add something about sidewalks and so forth in there, um, which would indicate obviously that if we're if we're going to provide that multimodal access um, that we need to provide the pathways to get there. Exactly, okay. Yes, that's a, that's a great suggestion, thank you. 
Could I, could I uh, raise an issue? So just where Gordon was talking about and cultivate the town's identity as a charming and welcoming place. Uh, are you going to be bold enough to identify or put the flag down to say that you want to maintain East Long Meadow as a town? So you cultivate the towns, you cultivate an identity as a charming, safe, uh, you know, welcoming town. <laughs> That, yeah, you know, that's funny. I really struggled with that in particular because I had already used the word town in the sentence. <laughs> um, so I can I can certainly um, work on playing around with that. Um, well, so maintaining guess, the status of as a town. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. All right. So um, what about Marilyn or Tim or? Does anybody else have any other thoughts so far? Thanks, Connor. Thank you, Connor. Um, Marilyn Richards here. Um, George brought up the area of um, preserving our agriculture, um, focusing on the importance of our agriculture. Um, we have an agriculture, or we have a farm right now that is functioning as a community center. And that's what East Lawn Meadow needs. We don't have town meeting anymore where we can gather. And, and visit with one another. So there are these smaller opportunities that are growing as part of our bedroom community. I don't consider us a commuter town. I mm. consider us <laughs> a, a suburb of, the, of Springfield and um, a community that um, has many, many assets. So mm -hmm. it, the agriculture was really the area that I wanted to focus on. So thank you, George. So, so you said there's a specific farm that- um... yes, the Apple Place which is on uh, uh, Route 83. It's just right outside of my, um, my neighborhood. And in fact, I live across the street from Meadowbrook Farm. So I walk to the farm, get strawberries, flowers, whatever. And then I go down the street and get baked goods, ice cream. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it's an amazing section of town that is developing into this more community oriented um, location. And oh. so those are areas that are real strengths yes. for our community. Okay, all right, thank you. You're quite um, welcome. Oh, I see some comments in the chat. Uh, Shannon from PVPC just uh, added a little, a little point there that the Apple Place is great with advertising on social media too, that, um, that they have a great Instagram account. Mm -hmm. oh, that's nice, okay, awesome. You're gonna have to come and have some ice cream. <laughs> Yes, yes, it's, it sounds like a really wonderful, I really, you know, that word charming really it was, was a deliberate choice um, based on the things that we heard. Um, um, Alexis? Yes? There's a comment in the chat um, as well, um, a propose uh, to change the sentence, um, encourage multimodal transportation by improving mobility or improve sustainable mobility uh, as mobility includes transport, but also accessibility and user attitudes. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, I think I did a bad job reading that out loud, but no, um, no, sorry. Great. That, that is, um, I'm just looking at it now. Um, oh, sorry, if you don't mm -hmm. mind. Sorry, it's just the echo is, I don't know oh, if it's sorry. possible everybody else but <laughs> um okay excellent yeah thank you for that suggestion and again it's another way to kind of consolidate some of these these bullets um so that is great all right um is there anyone i don't want to jump to the focus groups without giving everybody who wants to speak a chance to speak about this so um connor sh shall i move on or hey you... alexis can i just ask real quick sure. the, the bullet about um, continuing to support and encourage passive and active recreation opportunities. Um, I guess I just want to make sure that we're not only including just, you know, single person activities like the rail trail and stuff like that, where, whereas we're really highlighting the great job the recreation department does in yes. supporting the kids and the youth and things like that, um, because I think this town does an awesome job of that. Absolutely. Uh, and, and I think a lot of other people agree to that as well. Yes, and we did we did hear quite a bit of that. Um, and I think, you know, in, in that particular uh, uh, um, chapter, 
they will go into more detail about that. We tried to keep it somewhat, I don't wanna say general because you don't wanna lose anything in the vision statement, but you know, active recreation that is that would um, apply to that. But yes, we, yeah, we absolutely. heard good. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Yep, no problem. <clears throat> All right, Connor, do you think um, is a, it's a good time for us to move on to the focus groups? Cause that will also kind of shape this vision. Yeah, I think we're safe to move to the next. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> so I, I will say, um, you know, we'll we'll make sure that we email you kind of takeaways because I realize that what we're saying is different than what the previous slide said. But um, if we if we kind of think about through this week and into the next week, if you could give us your feedback at that time, um, that way Fiona and I can make sure that PVPC uh, and you get an update within the time frame that they need to finish up their work on the draft chapters. So um, I'll make sure that we clarify that date for you. All right, so we are going to be hosting uh, four focus groups and we're trying to um, kind of nail down the dates. What I had first done at the first level was ask PVPC staff who will be working on the chapters, what their availability was, because obviously they have to be able to be there. Um, and so giving them kind of a lot of timeframes to choose from, and then from there narrowing it down so that the people that we kind of come up with as to who we should invite, we then give them, I narrow it down to three options and go with the option that most of the people can attend. Um, and then if there's someone who really wants to attend, but the time that gets chosen doesn't work for them, we are happy to provide uh, written questions for you to give uh, feedback to. Uh, in writing, and then we can, you know, certainly incorporate that as well, and consider that, you know, with just as much weight as someone who is at the focus group, because we don't want, you know, we recognize that it's limited, uh, limited opportunities, especially because we try and be respectful of the fact that a lot of the people we're asking to participate are town staff, and you know, they have a work day, but then some of the other people we're asking have other jobs, and you know, so it's just it's it's tricky to balance that. Um, so we want to make sure that. Uh, everybody who wants to kind of have a voice in these focus groups, even though they're meant to be small and tailored to people who are uh, specifically really involved with that aspect in your community, um, we don't want to cut anyone out from it either. So um, the first focus group is would combine the elements, the transportation and public facilities and services elements of the plan, because they often tie in together. And so the, the PVPC chapter authors for those elements would be um, uh, at, at that as well. And together we would be asking questions of those members of the community whose voices would really be able to provide some meaningful feedback on those topics. <clears throat> and the focus groups right now, I'm, I'm slating them for an hour and a half with the assumption that half of it would probably be spent more on one topic and then the other half on the other. I don't want to completely separate it though, because of um, the, the places of overlap. Um, that said, if somebody that we invite really is just focused on transportation, or you know, they're they're welcome to hop off the meeting um, if if they feel that you know they've weighed in on the questions that are applicable to them. Um, the second focus group would uh, focus on housing and economic development, and after the the feedback from from the committee members about agriculture, we definitely want to make sure on our list that we include uh, elements relating to that. Um, and actually, this is, see, there's so much overlap. Um, as uh, I think Lori, Lori also mentioned that that also kind of ties into the, the cultural aspect of, of the plan as well. So focus group three is on cultural, um, historic and open space, natural resources. And then the fourth focus group would be specifically relating to climate change, resiliency um, and uh, sustainability. So those are the, the topics. And, um, I, you know, I, it's, it's, like I said, I don't have the specific dates because I realized after I suggested dates to PVPC that realistically it's going to have to go into the second week in March. Um, so I'm, I still need to work that out specifically, but um, I would uh, like you to weigh in on who you think we should invite. So right now I have a tentative list that I'll, I'll pull up um, and it's, you know, comprised of committee members, other people. So first what I did was I just looked around the town website and, and to see, you know, what staff members, what committee members, who, who would be um, a good person to, to have. Um, and then from there, uh, Bethany gave some, some great feedback as well. Um, and uh, um, Russ, I know you had some suggestions for uh, economic development that you had shared with Lori. So those, um, I don't, 
I don't think those are on my list yet, but they, I have them and they will be. Um, so, so don't you worry when you see that, but I'm going to stop sharing this screen so that I can share uh, those lists. Does anybody have any questions though, about how this will work? Uh, my only question less about this particular slide is, will we get a copy of this whole presentation, um, like in an email or something so that we can review it all later? Sure. That's okay. I, I, we can do that. We can, um, send it along. Um, yeah, we can send that along. All right. Cool. So I'm going to stop sharing. All right. So, okay. And then I'm going to restart sharing. <laughs> um, also, if you see that I have a name up there, again, this is really just a draft. I want to hear from, from you as to who you think I'm, I'm missing. Um, I'll share in just a moment. <clears throat> All right. So if someone is highlighted, it indicates that they are also on the committee. Um, and if you see that I didn't highlight someone that I should have, certainly please let me know. But focus group one, again, uh, topics would be transportation, public facilities and services. And um, that would include Gary from PVPC, who's working on transportation um, and, and Ken and Catherine kind of overseeing the public facilities and services. So they would, they would be there as well. Uh, and this, so this is this list that you see down here. Um, I have a participants from related planning efforts because sometimes in a community, there's other things going on that might be relating to um, the, uh, to these elements. And sometimes it's a really great way to help them help us, you know, we kind of merge our efforts, um, and, and welcome them as well. So if, if you can think of anything relating to transportation or public facilities and services going on within your community that, you know, they might also benefit from sitting in on this and, and bringing questions to it, that would be, that'd be great. Um, the, the town invitees, uh, you can see here, um, kind of, again, what I found just looking around the website and then also um, through, um, through Bethany's suggestions as well. But is there anything that seems incomplete about this list for transportation and public facilities? Just a thought, I don't wanna volunteer him, but I think would Tim potentially, if he's willing, be a good idea given that the walkability is part of transportation in town and running might coincide with that. I don't know if you're open to that. I am, absolutely, sure. So so what, I'm sorry, Tim, 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 Tim. Uh, Tim Murphy. Tim Murphy, okay. And, and affiliate, what should I put for affiliation? I'm sorry. He's on the committee. Yes, I know he's on the, oh, sorry, yes, but you mentioned running. Uh, we own 4Run3, which is a specialty running store. In oh, Central okay, Square. all right. Got it. I think I actually have you on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I do have you. So what we do is we invite people and they may or may not choose to attend. So you might actually get multiple invites. Um, because I, I might say, hey, you'd be really great at this uh, focus group. Um, and then you know, you might get get multiple ones. So certainly just do what you can. Um, yeah. We can, uh, I, I mean, I can suggest a couple of folks on that list too. Um, actually, Bethany, I think you brought up Ray Clue from Family Bike, I think, at some point, didn't you? Yep, I was just going to suggest that. Um, yeah. Family Bike, he's right on the, um, on the, the rail right. trail. Um, he's, I reached out to him, I think, a month or so ago, asking yeah. if he'd be interested in participating. I can reach out to him, too. I can give him a buzz. Sure. Okay, so, so what I'll do after this meeting, after I kind of fill, this, this is just a draft, right? So I'll fill this in, and then I can I send out kind of a more finalized version of who will be inviting. Um, and then you can give me feedback on that so that if there's anyone, you know, after the fact you realize, I know I'm kind of springing it on you, um, you can certainly chime in with that. So Ray, what's Ray's? I heard a Ray, right? Ray, Ray's last name. Let me see. Is it Plouffe? P-L-O-U-F-F-E? Is that right? Oh, I'm sorry. Ray. Yes, I don't know if that, I don't, I'm not sure on the spelling, but that's correct. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, I will, I will let you again, as a committee, kind of continue to think about this when I, get, I send you kind of a more formal list uh, with all of these people and let me know if you think there's anyone that I should add um, for housing and economic development. Um, 
I know Bethany had, I had asked about this. I know that you were, the town is doing some work on local rapid recovery planning, which if there were current efforts relating to that, that could be a good place to tie in. But if not, then um, that just may not, may not be relevant right now. But uh, so for, for housing and economic development, we often include um, uh, people from Council on Aging represent representation and also veteran services because they, they tend to have uh, unique concerns relating to housing in particular. If there's also transportation, I'm not sure exactly off the top of my head, but I know sometimes um, the Council on Aging, if there's also transportation things that they provide, sometimes they also are, uh, you know, Mary Beth might be getting an invite to multiple <laughs> focus groups. Um, and obviously, again, do what you can. Or if there's someone else, like if you get an invite and you're on the Council on Aging um, and you can't attend, certainly pass along that invite to somebody else that you're working with who could. But so right now we have um, Veteran Services, Council on Aging, Housing Authority, um, Tim, um, Joe Williams, um, Ann DeWolf. And then, so, so Russ, uh, I, I had you on here just from looking around the website and then Lori, uh, let me know that you also had some suggestions. So I do have those. Um, Russ, if I send you the invite, would you be able to forward it to those contacts that you had suggested? No, no? I, don't, okay. I don't have their contact information. Okay, all right. I'll poke around. So just to, let, just to let people know some of the names, mm -hmm. I went for a younger group of people who are all small business owners, as well as representatives from uh, Carta Monday, which is the largest employer in town. Ah, okay. Okay. I should probably have those, those uh, email addresses once I have the names. Okay, sure, sure. So I'll send that out. Um, probably this evening, that'd be great. And so Alexis, um, as you probably are aware, we completed or at least have a draft form of the housing chapter for this mm -hmm. particular plan. And we do have, we did have a housing committee. So more than likely that invitation would be extended there to the focus group. Okay. Um, and, I'll, and I'll give you the name of those um, and Bethany can confirm them. Excellent. Um, I have an extra, there we go. <laughs> okay, and then for cultural, historic, open space, natural resources. Um, hey, uh, Alexis, sorry, oh, real quick. On, okay. economic, on economic development, yep. do you think it would make sense to have a, a restaurant owner or, or two around? Do you think that would that might fit into this? I, I mean, like, I, I think so. Uh, Lori, I know that, that this, is, this chapter is your, um, would that be helpful? Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm trying to, I mean, you know, there's some some primary restaurants in town. I don't know if anybody has any um, connections with restaurants. Maybe Tim knows yeah, the I owner can... of uh, Center Square Grill there. Yeah, Center Square Grill. I was just thinking. I yeah, can, uh, I can mention it to Bill for sure. Yeah. Is there uh, is there like any business association or chamber of commerce or anything that there is? Yeah. In fact, I I had mentioned uh, actually we did a a roundtable with uh, with the town and after that round table we talked for a little while after and we mentioned this oh, project okay. that's going on yeah with the chamber so they've okay. asked yeah anytime we have any info um please forward it on to them they're gonna they'll they'll share anything we have so awesome oh that is great okay okay i wonder so, too, sorry go ahead i was just wondering too does it make sense to have someone from the school side as well with housing and economic development because i know that that tends to be a hot topic for them is what impacts additional people might have as well. Ah. Especially since there's no like dedicated school chapter in the plan. I'd, I'd be happy to be part of that. Okay. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Gordon. You're I'm welcome. just mentioning that um, I don't think I saw Bay Path College on anywhere, right? Like I, I wonder if maybe they could, I don't know, or should be a part, just a I thought. Was, I was just gonna say that as well. Um, I don't have any connections personally with um, Bay Path. I've been trying to make a connection because they are such a, a large resource, or they could be. Um, but if anybody, I know, else has I know one, someone that I could uh, reach out to. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, that would be great. Um, so, for cultural, historic, and open space and natural resources. Um, I have th this, I, I believe actually, Bethany, um, 
I'm, I'm fairly certain that you added a lot of these, I think, or maybe I got them from Shannon. I can't recall now, but either way, this was great. Um, and uh, if you see anybody that, that I should be adding, um, please let me know. Oh, Shannon, you had in your list, there was a participant, is Shannon on this call? I keep singling her out and then I think she is because she said- Yeah, that. she is. Hi, Shannon. Um, Hi, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, so you were, you were in, um, you were in my group and there was a participant and I looked back at the video, but I couldn't see his name in the video and it's driving me crazy because he had such wonderful ideas. So yeah. I don't know if, if Connor, you were in that group as well, if you know that gentleman's name um, or I can show you in, in, the, in the video. Um, but so he had these ideas about heritage tourism in particular um, and connecting oh, yeah. it to- um, With the quarries. Yeah. And so I thought that that was a really awesome idea. And Shannon thought that he would be um, helpful to, to learn more about his, his thoughts. So- um, but I don't yeah, know who he is. So <laughs> John Anderson, one of our town counselors, but I can get your his contact information to you. Did you say John Anderson? Don. Don. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, and and I, George Kingston, I think I would like to participate in this one as well. Okay. Uh, I had uh, done conservation for 25 years, so I kind of know every puddle in town. <laughs> okay. All right. Excellent. And I'm sorry, can you just say your name again? I can't see George all of Kingston. George Kingston. I can't see your faces because I can only see my screen, <laughs> my, uh, what I'm sharing. Thank you. Okay. That'd be great. Hey, Alexis, can you throw me in there too? I'd like to talk about recreation. Joe. Yes. Yes, please. Thanks. And, and also um, for the commission, I think Tom K is head of the recreation commission, I believe. So he okay. might be a guy I'd, Otherwise, there's plenty of other people on the Recreation Commission, Dan, Dan Reynolds, okay. um, who would probably be, you know, up to speaking. Okay, excellent. They, they have a great group. Okay, that's awesome. So I think, you know, hearing that, that you all have such great suggestions, once I send out um, my, you know, kind of finalized version of this, and, and if, if more thoughts come up, one thing that would be super helpful is if I send the, um, the kind of the, the poll for what times are suitable for most people, if you can also share that with people that, that come to mind. I mean, we, it, can't, it can't get so big that, you know, it's not like another visioning session, um, but if there's someone, uh, and if you, you know, want to ask first, like if, you know, would this person be helpful to speak with, uh, I, either I can ask the chapter author working on that or, um, or uh, Ken and Catherine can weigh in. But my sense is, you know, that it sounds like you all, have really great ideas about who else I we could be reaching out to, and I and I want to make sure we include them. So um, certainly feel free to also send along because it's not the way the the poll works to indicate your times. You don't need the way I have it set up. You don't need an invite. You do need to provide your email, but um, it's not like it's you know it's not by invite only just to respond to the the, the, the time selection. Uh, climate change and sustainability. All I have for that, I know, uh, Bethany, I had asked you, I know that there was some, that there was a committee that I had asked about, but there was a very extensive list on the website. I was not sure what to include for this from the town. Um, and so um, I, I would love your suggestions. Sure. Um, or, or anyone's suggestions, but Bethany, can you uh, refresh my memory as to the name of that committee? Emergency response? What? Uh, or the plan emergency planning. I, it's it, it's a, without it, the website in front of me. I can't recall, but it's the um, local emergency planning committee, the LEPC. Yes, yes, yes. yes thank you. Um, but there were a ton of members on the um, the website, and I think you had mentioned that that it was not necessarily up to date. So, uh, would we be able to kind of get an up to date list on that? Uh, potentially. I was also thinking just um, of reaching out to our local farmers. Um, I know there was one of the teachers, uh, her, I, her first name's Amy, and I can't remember her last name, um, but she was, was very involved. Amy Lance Singh. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, she would be great to have um, as part of this conversation, just because she's working with her students and actually had her students uh do a project around the master plan and how the town can be more resilient and had the kids come up with some ideas. So, oh, um, that is so awesome. That yeah, so I would love to have her part of this and maybe even if she had some of her 
um, kids from her class who wanted to be part of that conversation. That would be awesome. Okay. Um, now, do you want me to just send that invite to her directly? I'm sure I can easily find her email or do you want to ask her first or? Uh, uh, sure, either one's fine with me. Okay. I know she'd be interested in participating. Okay, sure. So Bethany, I guess my next question then, <laughs> Uh, when, when I was um, when I was going to schedule the times and I was asking about Fridays because I didn't want to assume, you know, that town staff would be available on a Friday because different, you know, different towns do it differently. But um, is, is town staff open to meeting after four? Because I know you said that the town staff hours are eight to four. I'm not sure how, how that works because it's with, with our inviting people from, you know, they're not all town employees. And especially if she's a teacher, I know she might not be able to step away from. Uh, mm -hmm. The classroom to join a meeting, I guess. So how much flexibility do we have with the focus group times if we want to include town staff? Um, I think with a with a good heads up, we might be able to do something after the typical um, work hours. I'm very familiar with working after hours just because I have um, a lot of board meetings that I go to at, at like 6 p.m. Yeah, so right. That's not an issue for me. Um, I don't know as far as the school departments how that would work out. Uh, Gordon, is that well, I, I, I imagine th thinking of Amy is partly why I'm saying it might need to be more like after, afternoon because I know, you know, like at I, least. I think, yeah, I think if you give advance notice, as Bethany is saying, that okay. they will be fine, um, okay. you know, and trying to rearrange uh, anything that they might have, because um, I think there's a there's a vested interest there. So absolutely. Right. Okay. Um, I know um, historically when, when the town has considered becoming a green community, there were concerns about the stretch code, which is the more energy efficient building code from um, realtors and home builders. Is that a concern still? Do you know, or are people recognizing that the stretch code has now become the de facto code and it's not an issue? Um, so I was just thinking in case it is an issue, you might want to invite a realtor um, and the building inspector um, in terms of the green community certification um, because that's all about making the buildings more energy efficient. So the building inspector or um, whoever does maintenance um, mm -hmm. might be appropriate. Yeah, when it comes to maintenance, potentially Bruce Fenny, the DPW superintendent mm -hmm. for all the buildings. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Joe Dunn would be good too for DPW if Bruce not, is not available. You Joe might Dunn. invite the builder. Um, invite who? Sorry. You might want to invite a builder. Okay. Yeah. Um, Bill LaPlante is a wonderful builder. LaPlante. Um, Will, Bill, Bill LaPlante, he lives in town. Okay. Yeah. Uh, or if, if he's not available, Mike Carabetta has been in town government and is a builder in town. Okay. I am winging it on the spelling of these names right now, but I will uh, do what I can to. You got it right. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> And uh, Paul, Chief Morissette, um, the the head of the emergency management director would be appropriate too. What was the last name? I'm sorry. Morissette. You have him on the other one. Oh, okay. Other, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. All right. Awesome. So this is this is great. So um, I, I hate to do this to my my fellows at PVPC, but I may suggest some other times now, given that I th I think that. Um, uh, we may need to give a little, a little more heads up to um, the people we would be inviting. So I'll touch base with, with you all first and make sure that we can work something out. Um, and then I will send out a list of uh, potential invites to the committee, to PVPC, so people have more time to digest and think about, oh, we should be inviting this person. And then I'll be able to send out the actual official invites so that people can respond. Does that work for everybody? Yeah, and Alexis, just to let you know, Bethany um, clarified with me, and I forgot to in integrate it into my brain, that um, the, the draft chapters for East Long Meadow are not due on March 15th. Um, she had, there's a range with the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, so oh. um, the March 15th is not a hard deadline. Okay, okay. It's, a, it's March through May. Yeah. Oh. You know, we, we would like to get a draft so that the committee can start responding, but since the committee is not meeting till March 24th, we're probably going to set that as a goal for draft, so we have a little bit more time. Okay, that's reassuring. Um, I still apologize to my PVPC friends that you're going to get yet another email from me about scheduling, but um, I think this way, we'll, we'll, this is good. We'll be able to make sure that 
uh, our friends in East Longmeadow have time to respond and um, that we can get as many people as possible involved with this. Cause it sounds like you have all of great ideas for who should be invited. So that's awesome. Um, well, that's it from, hey, sorry. Hey, Alexis, I'm sorry. Yeah? Um, and I just thought of this for the um, sustainability piece. I don't know if anybody knows anything about solar that might be beneficial to the town. I, I honestly just don't, I don't know what we have for solar and if somebody can speak to that as an ability to be more sustainable going forward, depending on how much space we have and things like that. So I don't know if there's somebody from like an energy hmm. area that could talk about that with some expertise. I know a lot of that stuff, I think typically is like privatized where mm -hmm. you have solar companies that come in and, and, you know, they use credits and so on and so forth. I don't know if anybody hmm. had anybody in particular, they could talk about that. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, plan the planning board would be good with respect to what kind of solar you want allowed in your community, you know, if you want large scale solar, but, um, but uh, small scale residential solar is, you can't regulate it. Um, no, so, I'm thinking, I'm thinking yeah. more large scale, you know, like, yeah. you know, blocking off an area of land and having a, you know, multiple panels there and so on and so forth that seems to be around these days. I don't know what we have in town and I don't know if that, I, I would imagine that would be ideal for long-term sustainability possibly. Yeah, Ken just actually um, co-authored a, a, a guidebook on solar regulations. Um, so he can certainly elucidate a lot of details about that, but it would be great to have a representative from the planning board there to share the concerns that the town has about these issues. Mm. For what it's worth, it was a recurring theme at during the vision session and during the breakout groups as well. So yeah, that's a good that's a good idea, Joe. Thanks. I think, um, you know, as Fiona mentioned, it being a theme, it probably was a theme that to to utilize the town's land, balancing the, the you know, the, the wants of the solar um, companies. It's specifically because the, the, the report that was authored by PVPC and, you know, assisted by communities like, like East Long Meadow um, was specific to a lot of solar developers coming to Western Mass and just, you know, shoddily putting up solar development um, in many towns. Um, so I think understanding that, understanding the needs of the Green Communities Grant um, and um, identifying how to kind of uh, work through that balance and work through the, the wants of the developers to develop there as well as the, the town to protect it from oversaturation of solar. Mm. Thank you, Ken, for using the word balance. <laughs> Mar having worked with Marilyn over the past eight months, that's my new word. <laughs> we do have a, just for information, a seven kilowatt, I believe that's the size, um, solar um, facility in our industrial garden park. It, Eversource tells me it's the largest site, single site, in, in Massachusetts. I mean, there are other communities have uh, several sites, but for a single site, it's one of the big ones. So yeah. um, it's, we do have that. We also have a bylaw that is currently being revised or considered to be revised. And we're also in litigation. So there you go. Did you say seven, seven kilowatt? Yes, yes. Okay. Cause yeah, I saw that on the aerial <laughs> photos. I would I think seven kilowatt. I think it's much larger than that. Um, oh. Who, that who the owns that? that I what company is? What company owns that? EverSource. Oh, that's EverSource. Oh, okay. George, am I? Is that correct, George? You know, if it's larger than that, he's in mute. No, it's it's not EverSource. It's uh, another. I've got uh, Bethany just sent out the report, the their annual report. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, really? Yeah, they re they're, they're required to report to the town uh, annually. On here we go, 2020 annual solar report. Uh, just open it up here and see what it says. Uh, yeah, what is ever source? I'm sorry, I, I didn't think it was, but. <laughs> Okay, fine. <laughs> I was losing my mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Yada, yada. 
um, noise, whatever. I have kilowatt hours, but not uh, not the size. It, it was eight million kilowatt hours, actually almost nine million kilowatt hours, uh, from January first to December thirty first, um, twenty twenty. That's pretty significant. Um, let's see, five. Looks like five thousand kilowatts. Okay, five megawatts. That's pretty big. That's, yeah, that's a big array. It's yeah. large. <laughs> that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> large. Wow. <clears throat> All right. So, um, uh, Ken and, and Catherine and and Connor. Uh, I think we are, we're good to go with the information that we need to move forward with the focus groups. I don't know if there's any other agenda topics for, for today. Connor, you're on mute. Sorry, I forgot I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I think the next one that was on the list was uh, master plan element drafts. Yeah, so it, yeah, it was, it was for information that um, based on, you know, the, the visioning session, as well as our focus groups, as well as the survey data that we did um, last year, that will all be incorporated into the drafts. As Catherine mentioned, staff will be working on that. And it's our goal to get that to you um, for the next um, uh, committee meeting, which would be the 24th of March. Um, and I think with that, I'm not sure if Catherine wanted to add anything um, with regards to the element drafts, um, but that was the, uh, and then I guess there was one other housekeeping thing um, with regards to meeting minutes for the next meeting, um, we will uh, be also forwarding to the committee um, four sets of meeting minutes, which are the first three as well as this meeting minutes um, so that um, subsequent meetings will have an agenda item for approving those minutes. Awesome. All right, so I think that was our last topic and our next steps. And so our next meeting was scheduled, you said the 24th of March at the same time, four o'clock. And so with nothing else, if someone wants to make a motion for us to adjourn, I move we adjourn. <laughs> I'll second that. All right. And so we'll do it as a roll call vote since we're on Zoom, Marilyn. Yes, and thank you for everything. Yeah, thank you, Marilyn. George? Yes. Tim? Yes, thank you. And Joe? Yes, thanks, Connor. Thank you. Gordon? Yes, and thank you as well. And Pam? Yes. And myself as a yes, Connor. So with that, thank you. Have a good afternoon, everyone. And we'll see you next month. Great. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. Everybody. Thanks.